modern approaches of all the modern approaches a very important approach is what is called behavioral approach this is a new approach compared to the other approaches that we discussed earlier the entire approach is based on rejection of two points first politics administration dichotomy must be rejected secondly the idea that all time valid solution or approach is to be rejected that is to say this behavioral approach basically starts with the pose of scientific inquiry and the high priest of this behavioral approach is herbert simon basically an economist and mathematician herbert simon in his famous book administrative behavior defined behavior of the individual and of the collective as the most important factor in the process of decision making and he considered decision making as the heart and soul of administration to be administer means to decide first in regard to goal then in regard to strategy and then in regard to how to proceed and then whatever decision is taken whether appraisal reappraisal or renovation correction decisions everything involves to decide and he starts with a severe criticism of classical approaches to public administration that is to say he said that this entire uh, classical approach or organizational approach they were uh, based on certain value considerations but simon wants to do away completely with value orientation in administration well secondly he says the decision making is basically a rational choice and thirdly he said that analysis of the choice factor can be and has to be statistically measured now first of all decision making simon argues in administration involves first of all the choice of a course of action and that course of action is to be rational is to be guided and based on reason he takes the case of a consumer or as a producer he says that on the basis of certain data the consumer will choose what to consume and for this he argues in order to be rational the data collection that is the basis of a choice is to be comprehensive and then he says that after having this picture of the total availability in the market of the thing consumed or the service to be consumed he will make a decision on how or to what use that will be made and again he says that there must not be any value neutral uh, must not be any value judgments it must always be value neutral this is no point that this is good this is bad this is not the point point is according to reason 
his choice is correct. Now this is a point which he insists on that throughout administrative decision making it is the behavior of the administrator and it is the behavior of the persons forming the government supervising or if it is a private sector then the behavior of the directors or managing directors whatever it is everything must be based on reason and the rational choice is finally to be accepted as the guideline but immediately after that he adds a footnote so to say he said that i know that the human life is not fully rational and there are definitely some limitations about the extent of data collection extent of knowledge about the total market for any individual and so he says that bounded rational he uses the con con concept of bounded rationality that to certain extent the application of reason in making a choice is bounded one cannot make it mathematically precise herbert simon then gives a picture of so many adventures or so many attempts of administering a system administering a policy and evaluating a policy therefore herbert simon insisting on statistical measurement of the outcome he is insisting that it is possible to give certain definite shape rational shape to the choice made in administrative decision making so this is a quite epoch making approach to public administration compared to the other traditional approaches or institutional approaches etc but the critics of simon says that the way simon wants us to believe that human beings as consumer or producer make a choice like this lindblom for example says that this is not correct for example lindblom comes with the example that if some consumer wants to buy a house then first of all according to simon he will go on searching a plot a location a house pattern planning etc etc and then how who advantage is to be uh, judged rationally whether the person or his wife or his children for making use of that new house now lindblom lindblom says that in actual life no person can go on making a decision like this because this is simply not logically possible and what actually takes place that after making certain choices alternative choices then the consumer makes a definite choice that okay thus far and the further i will buy this house or i will choose this location this neighborhood etc this service so he said that he in fact going through our experiences of the reality we muddle through to come to a decision this is here to call the theory of muddling through but still simon's main emphasis was on making the decision making as the core uh, theme of public administrative theory um main criticism against any behavioral approach is this that it has got limited utility in actual life theoretically okay but as lindblom says there is also some theoretical difficulties but after considering all these things main difficulty is is limited utility what use we can make in making a decision in administrative process 
in regard to recruitment, in regard to discipline, in regard to punishment, in regard to personnel, in regard to compensation, in regard to salaries and wages. So one cannot go on like this. Inevitably, the environmental circumstances come to influence the decisions of the producer and the decision of the consumer. Next important is systems approach. Now, this is uh, an approach which originally has come from David Stone system analysis in political theory. And Stone argues that instead of state, we should think of a system, political system, that is by definition a system is an arrangement in which all subsystems that is part of the system, they are interrelated and interdependent. This interdependency of the different parts of a system makes system a typical and unique organization. And the systems analysis when applied in public administration, we find uh, best in C. West Churchman and he wrote a book titled The Systems Ap Approach 1968. Now Churchman, he has elaborated uh, certain arguments and he argued that any organization, any administrative arrangement of any firm or a government department or a regional administrative body or whatever it is, it must have certain parts or uh, elements which are working separately and at the same simultaneously depending on others. Human body, for example, is a system. There are so many organs, hands, feet, brain, etc., etc., but all these are also interdependent. Unless they work in an interdependent way and in a harmonious manner, the system will not work. System will not produce is fruit. So, this is another approach in modern times what, by which public administration seems to have benefited much. Now this systems approach can be applied to non-government organizations also, private corporate sector also, even any organization, religious organization, business organization. So uh, it is argued and that systems approach is far better to understand the nature of administrative functions, the nature of the administrative processes. Therefore, this very approach, how to look at it, any organization approach means how to look at it. If we look from this angle that it is a system having interdependent parts, then it is easier and more intelligible to appreciate the value of public administration theory or simply administration theory. Third most important approach in public administration in the group of what we say uh, modern theories is structural functional approach. The structural functional approach is basically coming from a science of anthropology. Malinowski and Radcliffe Brown, these two anthropologists, they invented this approach while making their anthropological field studies. Their argument is that every human organization has certain functions to be performed and every function has a structure, 
every structure has its own function. So, structural hyphen functional, structural functional approach. This was applied in sociology by Talcott Parsons. He wrote a book very famous, The Social System, that a society as a whole is a system having certain structures and each structure has its own functions. Just a very small example, family is a structure within the total social system. But the functions performed by family cannot be uh, performed by other structures like political party, like business groups. They are all structures within the social system. So every social system having their subsystems is dependent on others. If we look at it in terms of structure, what are the structures? And secondly, what are the functions they perform in regard to the total system in order to make the system workable and working? If we take a political example from a political system, the executive is a structure, legislature is a structure, judiciary is a structure, civil society is a structure, and each of these organs has its own functions which cannot be function performed by other structures. So this type of looking at what we call this type of approach to the understanding of administration or management of government policies or the administrative system as a whole is more beneficial and it, it is useful. That it is useful is proved by other theoreticians like Robert Martin. He has studied bureaucracy as a system having certain structures and its corresponding functions. To some extent, Fred Riggs also adopted it in his approach, new approach, so to say, to the understanding of public administration. Fred Riggs, we now come to the approach with which his name is intimately connected, that is called ecological approach to public administration. His basic argument is every, every country has its own environment of public administration. In fact, uh, it, it was John Gauss for the first time in 1945, just in a small uh, book or essay, argued this point. And Fred Riggs in the mid-60s, they elaborated it later on. Riggs' argument is this, public administration of any country is unique and it cannot be replicated in another country totally. His argument is that every society, every population has its own history, its own customs, his own value judgments, his own preferences, basically its own culture which is heavily influencing the administrative values and the administrative system. So the administrative system in order to understand its essence must be studied in reference to the cultural basis, culture in a broad term including history, geography, customs, folklore, basic ideas and presuppositions of the community. This same concept or same structure cannot be replicated, or one country cannot be replicated in other countries. By from this approach he began his study of third world countries. And he made his own study first in Thailand and then in other countries and he found the difference between the American administrative system and the Thai administrative system, although the terms are common, bureaucracy, efficiency, uh, productivity, etc., 
but the terms do not mean the same thing everywhere. What is called efficiency in American system or American society may not be the same thing as what is called efficiency in the Thai society or maybe Malaysia, maybe India or any African countries. Now the basic gain, basic new, new thing that this approach adds is that every administrative system is best understood in terms of its cross-cultural impact. That is to say, a new branch of public administrative study emerged as a result of this approach, what is now very popular and very important called comparative public administration. It was Rickshian study who made the bureaucracy in developing country, third world countries, how it functions and he had his own way that is uh, a primitive, then trans uh, agricultural, then transis transitional and then industrial giving everywhere the uniqueness of every society and this administration. The bureaucracy is a common term but bureaucracy does not mean according to this approach the same thing in America or France or India or Russia, China, Japan or any other Afro-Asian countries. So this is a unique contribution we find. Robert Dahl was very much uh, contributed to it and was influenced by it in his contribution to comparative public administration. Now I think the next most important modern approach can be called public policy approach. Now here again it has to be understood in its unique meaning. Public policy study is a subfield of public administration study. Thanks to the huge contribution made by Ezekiel Dror, public policy study has assumed tremendous importance in modern time. That is, every state or every public administrative system has to devise public policy, has to, has to formulate public policy, has to implement public policy, has to reappraise the public policy and the outcome of the reappraisal comes as an input into the system of public policy making and therefore this is what has been called by experts as the policy cycle. Whether it is planning, whether it is reconstruction of rural areas, whether it is urban development, whether it is women's empowerment, in whichever way we look at the policies having public interest at its goal is called a public policy. And this public policy is to be studied in a cyclic manner that is policy, no policy is final that is to say. All public policies are to be revised from time to time. Otherwise, there is chances of corruption growing or failure of any public policy. So, no dogmatic approach but an open scientific approach having the public interest at its core but it is to be studied as a policy matter. Policy is a thing which is implemented through administration. So, policy and administration, they are indivisible and public interest is best served if this scientific manner of public policy studies, which is now having uh, almost trying to have an autonomous claim of being a subfield of public administration. Modern approaches 
the last one is also very important. It is called new political economy approach. Now this term political economy originated in the 17th century with the French physiocrats and then the term was used by John Stuart Mill that is there are political aspects of the economy and there are economic aspects of the politics and thirdly political economy the term was used by Karl Marx also in his own way meaning thereby that economy is the real base of the social structure and the political structure and also the culture of system. Anyway, that is a Marxian system as a whole, but point is that political economy was, this term was used. But th that is all about from 17th, 18th, 19th century. But when in the 19th, 20th century we find a new political economy approach has been devised by the economist to study the public administrative system including political systems. I gave examples of two. 1957, Anthony Downs published his famous book Economic Theory of Democracy. For the first time an economist is trying to understand the working of a democratic polity and giving its interpretation how a democratic administration functions on the basis of or under the influence of economic factors, economic considerations. And in 1962, two authors, Buchanan and Tulloch, they brought out a book with a unique title, The Calculus of Consent, that is what is called popular consent as the basis of democratic governance. Now what is the calculus behind it? That is to say how people come to derive the consent of their own and how it is reflected in public policies and public administration. And pure public administration theorist Vincent Ostrom devised a concept of democratic administration as opposed to bureaucratic administration in order to bring forth the idea that new political economy is a new approach which is very important and will yield new results. If we want to understand where the, where, whether the capitalist system or the bureaucratic system or the totalitarian system, the point is what, how, what is the in economy working in that particular context and that will have the impact on it. Now in very modern times in 21st century so long, now we, in India we find also latest phase that how economy functions that determines ultimately the end result of political system or the administrative system. Thank you.